Hey guys, this is Lior with Angle and & Volkers and in this video, we're gonna talk about why you need a really good and aggressive realtor when buying a home. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about why when buying a home, you really, really wanna choose the most aggressive and best realtor for you. A lot of people tend to choose the first person they know, the first person that talks to them, or a friend or something, which is fantastic, right? Um, you know, I'd certainly appreciate loyalty, but there's so many booby traps when going through the purchasing process that you really wanna make sure you're represented, especially when you're buying in Boston. You know, we're buying homes that are from anywhere from $300,000 to 1.5 million. So this is gonna be a huge investment, so you wanna be protected. So reason number one, right? When you're going to look at homes, you don't need us to like schedule a showing or you know send you homes, right? We have technology for that. But when you actually go and look at the homes, do you really know what you're looking for, right? We're dealing with 1900, 1900 um, homes, right? Homes that are built in the 1900s. So these are old homes. And a lot of times they have things like dated electrical, dated plumbing, dated roofs, foundations that are maybe not as sturdy. You know, and if you're not in the business every day, for example, you might not really appreciate what it means if you don't have the most updated electrical. I mean, off the top of your head, do you know what it takes to gut, to put in a brand new electrical in a 2,000 square foot home? That could be a $15,000 bill if you're not careful, right? So when you're walking the home, you really wanna put an eye out for what's the true condition of the home, right? And not only how it looks up front, right? Because cosmetics are great, but it's oftentimes what's behind the walls that's the most dangerous part about a home, especially ones that are super old, right? Built in the early 1900s or even late 1800s. I mean, it's Boston, right? It's an old city. So again, think, understanding how things like electrical, plumbing, foundation, roof, how all of that is gonna affect your investment in the long term. The number two is actually putting the offer in, right? It, you know, it's not as simple as saying, hey, Mr. Siller, I'm gonna write you a $500,000 offer, right? Most of the times in the Boston area, especially as of late, we're dealing with ultra, ultra competitive situations, right? I mean, housing is a shortage, everyone wants a house, so there's, typically you're dealing with multiple bids. So you need to figure out, A, how hot is the, how hot is the property that you're dealing with, right? Not only the neighborhood, but the certain, the, the, even the type of product, right? So the type of house, is it a single family that is gonna fly off the shelf? Or is it maybe something that's gonna, you think may stay a little longer? That impacts how aggressive you wanna be on the offer. And not only offer price, but also remember, there's a lot of contingencies that go with the purchasing of home, right? So there's contingencies from mortgage contingencies to home inspections, to lead paint, to pest inspection contingencies. Again, you wanna understand, you wanna be in a position where you can be as aggressive as you wanna be while really protecting yourself, right? So again, a good realtor will tell you, hey, you should, if you really want a chance at this house, this is what you should do. This is, you should drop this contingency or, or it's okay for you to keep this contingency, all right? And not only that, but say, let's, let's take the home inspection contingency. It's not only about saying, should you do it or should you not, but it's also how aggressive do you wanna be with it, right? Do you wanna, how much damage are you willing to live with? So if a home inspector says there's $10,000 worth of damage, is that something you're okay taking? Or if there's $5,000 worth of damage, is that something you wanna negotiate? Again, there's a lot of fine art to it, but just the, usually the smallest nudge can impact whether you get the property that you really want and wanna close on. And finally, it's transaction management, right? It's really hard on, it, you really don't know this until you go through the process, but going through a transaction can be super stressful because you have so many different parties involved, right? You have a lender, you, and, and you have a lender, you have an attorney, you have the brokers, you have appraisers, you have so many different parties that all need to be managed cohesively to get a transaction done. So your realtor is really the quarterback of the team. And I can't tell you how many times I've been where I literally had to will everyone to work together, make sure everyone is doing their job properly, getting in the proper paperwork, not only to keep the transaction alive, which of course you want as the buyer, but also protecting you, right? I mean, a lot of times there's deadlines where if you don't meet certain deadlines, then deposits can be in jeopardy. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure that goes into these transactions. So the right realtor will quarterback the transaction for you and get the job done. So even though you have, you know, even though there are a lot of options today, 
in terms of choosing a broker, you really want to make sure that you're choosing the most aggressive and the best broker to represent you.